Hacks, or the Home Assistant Community Store, is growing up. It is now version 2.0 and has a lot of improvements to the speed, the UI, and the function. So today we're going to dig into those. Let's get started. Before I start talking about what's new in Hacks, let's talk about what Hacks actually is. Hacks stands for the Home Assistant Community Store, and it doesn't sell anything. Everything in there is free and open source. It's there for those in the community who write custom code to address something that they think is missing from Home Assistant. So it allows you the ability to share code with the community unrestricted. You can submit it in a GitHub repository. This, this means all that stuff is maintained by community members that upload them. So hacks and or Home Assistant does not maintain them, nor does Hacks itself. So one of the things that I want to clear up right away, and I've been guilty of this, it is not a tool that installs add-ons in Home Assistant. Home Assistant OS has its own built-in store for Home Assistant add-ons. Add-ons run alongside Home Assistant, whereas Hacks installs custom code that can run in Home Assistant. So why would you want to use Hacks? Well, there's a lot of integrations available. There are a lot of things that are not supported in Home Assistant's core operating system or in its core system. So Hacks does something to fill those gaps. There are hundreds of integrations on Hacks and some are there because authors didn't have time to meet the rigorous standards that Home Assistant requires. Others are just doing something not necessarily allowed by Home Assistant like web scraping, which by the way, is not a good idea. So they are in the Home Assistant Community Store for a reason. There are also advanced integrations that are over there that are more complex than maybe the stuff that's part of their core uh, components. Some of the integrations combine multiple sensors that provides new data points. Some of these even give Home Assistant added new features. Um, in, in Home Assistant Community Store, you can actually have this rapid development because you can update outside of the Home Assistant refresh cycle. A lot of times I'll get updates for things mid home assistant update cycle in, in hacks for stuff that hacks is updated. In fact, I get a lot of those all the time. Uh, I used to have a sensor on my dashboard, um, that showed the updates, but now those show up elsewhere. And I'll get to that in a little bit cards and themes. Uh, there are amazing cards, UIs being built by the developers. Um, so they, a lot of the front end kind of things in hacks are improvements to the UI of home assistant itself. And then of course there's scripts and templates. You can share those easily through hacks as well. So that is the why for using hacks in the home assistant ecosystem. All right. So how do you install home assistant community store? First of all, it should work on any up-to-date version of home assistant. It even runs on the core installations. It requires a GitHub account because you have to download the actual components from GitHub. If you already have a version 1.x hacks installation, then you just need to perform a backup and then click the update button for hacks. So if you update, there is no downgrading. And I'll show you that in just a moment. If you're a first time installation person, all you need to do is make a backup of your system. Make sure you download it somewhere else. Backing up to the same system isn't going to help you. If it fails, you want to have a backup copy somewhere else. There are lots of ways to back up home assistant. I won't go into that today. Install the add on using this link. Add the hacks repository, and install the add-on links to this. So you can click on this link right here, which takes you to this page, or it's the same button. This and this button do the same thing. So click on that one, and then you open the link and it'll ask you if you are sure. Okay. And then it goes through its install process by clicking on install there. This add-on only provides the easiest way to download hacks. It doesn't actually run hacks. So you use the install button here, you start the add-on, and then you navigate to the add-on logs and follow the instructions given there. All right, it's installed and you click on start. Once you click on start, you want to add on and navigate to the log page and follow the instructions there. So we'll wait for the logs to refresh here. And you can see here it's creating the directory, unpacking hacks, verifying the versions. And you can see the installation is complete. So it stopped all these services. I did say click on start on boot here, but you don't need to do that. This is only a one-time run. So now what you want to do is you want to go over and 
uh, restart home assistant. So that's going to be your next step. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to restart home assistant. I'm going to do a full restart. All right. So home assistant has now started. So now we can go to the devices page integrations and we want to add an integration. Let me get myself out of the way. Here we go. Add integration. And you want to search for hex. And so click on that right there. Please wait, starting configuration wizard. And then here are some things that it always asks you. Before you set up hacks, you need to know the following. You know how to access the logs. And this is all because you may have to troubleshoot something if it doesn't work right. You know there are no add-ons in hacks. These are integrations. Everything inside hacks, including hacks itself, is custom and untested. And I know that if I have issues with Home Assistant, I should disable all my custom components. Essentially, it's a CYA. They want you to agree to all these things before you install this. And now I need to authorize GitHub for this particular device. And I will do that, and I will come back here in just a moment. All right, so once you configure it, uh, GitHub, and apply that, then it will give you a success, and you can just finish that out. Okay, so that is the installation of Hacks if you've never done that before. Now, if you're using Hacks already and you're in version one, you can see here that I'm running version 1.3.4 and version two is available. That's how you would update it. You would click on this and it would update Hacks and it would tell you what's going on here. Now, I'm not gonna do that quite yet because I wanna show you the difference between the two versions. So in version of the old version of Hacks, you would get to it again by the side here and you would go down to either integrations, front end or add-ons. I'll just look at integrations and you're gonna see something that looks like this. These are all the, the green ones are all new that I haven't installed before. And at the very bottom of that are all the ones that I have installed. The blue ones require some sort of update. That's the old store and the same thing for the front end. Uh, you have two different tabs up here across the top. So that's how it looks for, and all your updates for hacks are gonna be in this section right here. So to update something, if I wanna update the, um, the National Weather Service alerts, I would click that, and then I would update it here, and it would go through. And a lot of times you would have to restart Home Assistant, which it tells me here. Under the new version of hacks, if I pull up hacks here, this is what it looks like now. Now, a couple things to note about the new version of Hacks and the way it works is that in the automations and the entities pages, you get these columns, and I know it's very tiny to see this. You get these, uh, these columns, which you can actually add and remove uh, here as well and or reorder the columns. It's the same sorting that you get on these other areas, and it follows along with Home Assistant's new UI and how you're able to sort and filter. So you can group status by type, uh, by any, by uh, don't group at all. You can sort by all of these different things as well. You can also filter on your status. So if you have any that require an update, so if I click on this, I have nothing here for pending update. Uh, all of these are downloaded. These are the ones that I already have in my system. And they're in a nice column uh, layout like this. You can also still sort by type. So you have dashboard integration or theme. Uh, let's see, integration or all of these. And I think dashboard is more like front end now. It used to be called front end, now it's called dashboard. So these are all the items that deal with the front end or the dashboard. All right, so you can get rid of these filters and get rid of this. Nope, there we go. And then again, you can group by status. You can group by type. So these are all the types. You can group by status, which is, where is my status? It's not visible, it's grouped by, but not visible. So if I were to show status, now you can see here downloaded, or all of these here and new. So if you wanted to see stuff that was available that you haven't already installed, you would click on new here or you would click on available for download. So it's a completely different way that the Hacks dashboard looks for everything. It, um, it's a definite improvement over what it was before and it makes it align along with what Home Assistant uh, in terms of their filtering and layouts and everything goes with. So a more unified look 
uh, in Home Assistant. So let me talk about briefly how we actually uh, install or update this. Remember there's breaking changes. It requires Home Assistant 2024 or later. The sensor platform has been removed. There's no longer hacks in YAML. Net daemon apps are no longer available in hacks. There is a new data source. I'll talk about a couple of the features and improvements in just a second. This hacks files endpoint no longer works for themes. Custom hacks prefix events are no longer fired. And then these, these files are no longer rendered. Instead, it uses a readme. If you're good with all that, then just click on update. And then you'll have the new version here in just a few minutes. The updates, I think I mentioned this, all the updates are here. In the future, all your updates for hacks will become available in the updates page here under settings. So here's an update for an add-on, an actual Home Assistant add-on. If there were any hacks updates, they would show up in here as well. And when this other one updates, we'll take a quick look at that. So we're gonna restart this and you'll see how the update stuff looks in the new version when there are actually hacks updates available. So while that's doing its restart, let's talk about some of the new features in uh, this version of hacks. And you can see here that uh, we talked about the front end. It's got a new front end and it has faster downloads now. In the past, hacks re relied on GitHub 100% of the time to retrieve information, things like file locations, number of stars, all of that. So in order to prevent API overload or blocking, they had to limit the number of calls to the API. So what they've done is created a remote data set stored in Cloudflare R2 buckets, Cloudflare R2 buckets. Those are updated regularly and all the files are still downloaded from GitHub the API is still contacted, but all of that other metadata and everything else comes from the Cloudflare buckets. And that just helps um, speed things up from a GitHub perspective. And obviously a lot of work was done to make this work. Um, this is what the Open Home Foundation is able to do for projects like this. And the way you fund Open Home Foundation is through your uh, contributions to Nabucasa and subscription-based stuff for Home Assistant there. All right, so update and repair, we talked about that as well. There is a single page for looking at that, and you can see that here now. This is the new version of Hacks on the device I just updated. And you'll see that you have all of these updates here. These will show updates for Hacks as well as Home Assistant Core updates. So if I want to just update one of these and I click on it, you can go through and look at what the updates are, just like you would with all of the other type of updates in Home Assistant and just click on install. And you'll see this difference here is where it installs and now it's up to date. And that's all you do. So everything is in the same updates section as you would see for anything else. So here you are, uh, repairs, updates, and all of that. So that's the new update section. So there's also other improvements like renaming category to type and level list to dashboard. Just makes it follow along with more of a, a better naming convention. They're also including template management, uses the new template type for your Jinja templates. And then just remember there are breaking changes. They removed the YAML configuration. Uh, there's no longer any net daemon type and they moved the beta selection switch to an entity. So more of these type changes are those affecting those who share code with hacks rather than those that are using hacks for integrations. So there is a brief history of hacks and how it came to be. You can read that on the Home Assistant blog and I'll link that down below as well. So that's a brief overview of hacks and the Home Assistant Community Store, what's new in version 2.0. Uh, it's uh, a great improvement over what it was before. And I look forward to more and more improvements in Home Assistant in general and all of the integrations and add-ons and things that have made this ecosystem what it is today. If you have any questions down below in the comments on discord uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber if you feel like supporting me there are various options through channel memberships and ko-fi and patreon and all that kind of stuff uh, and with that we will see you on the next one